On behalf of the Faculty of Social Science of Tsinghua University, we are pleased to have a virtual exhibition, Voices of Ethnic People in Chan State, about gender equality, at the third international conference on Burma-Myanmar study at Tsinghua University. The exhibition presents 16 case studies related to women empowerment in the South and Eastern Shan. For more than 20 years, the Faculty of Social Science has been running study program on gender and ethnicity. We focus on innovative, socially engaged research in the areas of ethnicity, indigenous knowledge, rights, gender and equity. We hope that the exhibition will enhance understanding of the multi-ethnic Myanmar society. I would like to express my gratitude to all people for their contribution to this exhibition. And we are delighted to have you joining us. Thank you very much indeed. Factors affect women's economic, political, and social empowerment in Myanmar's Shan state. This was the main question researchers from the Myanmar Institute for Integrated Development and their partners asked as part of a large research survey. The Myanmar Institute for Integrated Development, or MIID, is a think tank based in Yangon. Their research was supported by Canada's Knowledge for Democracy Myanmar Initiative, a $10.7 million program supporting local think tanks and researchers. The survey was done at the village level from 2018 to 2020, well before the military coup in 2021. They surveyed 280 households across seven ethnic groups in South and East Shan State. They also conducted focus group discussions and individual interviews. Shan State is the largest and most diverse region of Myanmar, home to numerous ethnic communities including Shan, Palau, Aka, Lahu, Pao, Danu, and Intha. Regardless of background or location, several common themes were observed when it comes to women's empowerment and gender equality. Nan Late is the only woman on her Shan Village Development Committee and heads the Community Forest User Group. She helps secure protection for 400 acres of forest and now helps manage the natural resource. Being able to speak Burmese with government officials enabled her to take a leadership role. Despite the fact that Da Na Bo is illiterate, she did not let this discourage her from being an effective assistant village head. Da Mu Mu A is a leader in her community. She facilitates trainings on women's rights and manages her own business. In another village, Ma Michelle is a respected leader, even though she is only in her 20s. She takes care of village affairs and negotiates with government officials. Traditionally, women are not viewed as leaders. In many households, women are not the decision makers.
participation in politics is increasing in some areas, but there is still a ways to go. It's not just men who perpetuate traditional gender norms. is a community leader and school teacher in her Danu village. Although criticized for attending village meetings, she persists and encourages more women to get involved in village affairs. Many villages are challenged by drug and alcohol addiction. Several local organizations host workshops to raise awareness about women's rights, gender equality, and leadership skills. Another community leader can get women to attend workshops, but that only goes so far. obstacles, there are also glimmers of progress. For example, the Pa'o National Organization governs three townships in southern Shan State. It is working towards 30% women in administration and state parliament. Others observe more women are participating in village meetings. In one Intha village, each ward has a women's group, then the Women's Affairs Commission represents all 13 groups. Seyama Nau Papa Nyu is chairwoman of the Women's Affairs Commission. She observes more women participating in village affairs, especially as awareness of women's rights has increased from trainings. Da Ne Shan Nan conducts trainings. She finds they are most effective when young women can identify role models in their community. Some see business as a way forward. Da Nen Chaute worked in the government for 38 years and now advocates for women's education and economic opportunities. Several note that there are more opportunities for women in urban centers than there are in remote villages, and that it is important to provide trainings for women with less education in rural areas. All agreed education for girls and women is vital. Pata is a monk who founded an elementary school in a remote Aka village. He says, one day I will die, as well as the elders, so I hope that the next generation will change this society. So now I train youth to prepare for the future, especially young women. <laughs>